All right, team, back for part two of the Odyssey. Let's just grab my daily real quick. Uh, a nice chill Odyssey. And I've got more time today. Yesterday was a little bit of a rush, but got a few more hours so we can take it easy. We can place Quincy and we can get her done as they say. I think I want subs up here and then a boat in the middle, probably. All right, let's see how that goes. What's the modifier on this map? I don't think there is one, is there? Uh, oh no, monkey notch. Oh yes, of course. That'll, uh, that'll change things up for us. Do we want longer range? Probably not yet. Quincy's quite capable at the moment. As long as the subs by his side. Cool, 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 cool. All right. Um. Yeah, I want to get a boat next. I'm thinking because I was thinking about the last map today, actually, while I was out shopping with the missus. Christmas shopping. Well, it's not Christmas shopping because we're not buying gifts for Christmas, but we're just shopping at Christmas time. You may think, oh, that's just that's just called regular shopping. But no, no, not 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 near the shops that we go to. See, when we went into the shops this morning, it was quite full, but we found a parking space pretty pretty easily because a very kind and generous lady uh, saw us waiting for somebody else to leave, came up and knocked on our window and was just like, hey, I'm I'm leaving right now if you want to take this spot. And we were just like, fuck yeah, we would. Thanks, lady. Uh, we, we didn't say it in those exact words, but the intention got across that we were appreciative of the spot being given to us. Um, so yeah, luckily we managed to snipe a spot nice and early, uh, thanks to the very kind shopper. Um, and we got all of our shopping done. We were mainly just buying food and things. And we had lunch, and then we got in the car to head back out, and here's where the problems arose. So, we're law-abiding citizens. You know, we, 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 we do our best to follow the road rules, and uh, typically when we exit the car park, we exit one way, because it's the fastest way to get out, right? However, it's a little bit annoying because you have to cross like four lanes of traffic in order to get to where you want. And I was just like, all right, clearly there is a shitload of cars here that are clogging up pretty much every single road in and around the car parks. So I was like, big brain me, everyone's gonna be going the fast way. And on top of that, Four lanes of traffic are gonna also be pretty clogged. So it'll take us ages to even get out once we get to the front and have the lead of that little intersection part. And so Big Brain Me was just like, huh, chuck a left here instead of taking a right so we can avoid that. And you know, there was there was no there was no complaints from the missus. She was on board, she was just like, ooh, smart idea, I see where you're going. That's when the fuck up happened. Because little did I know, uh, the the troubles with parking were happening everywhere. Everywhere. Not just where we were parked. Right? And so I thought, yeah, we'd be taking a slightly longer route, but overall it'll be faster. Ooh, was I wrong. <laughs> was I wrong. So there was a few stages to the failures of, uh, of leaving the shopping center car park. That was the first one. Neither of us knew about that, so we're kind of, we're, we're, we're not, we're not too broken up about it. But, the following ones were not technically our fault. Other people were doing illegal dodgy shit. And so it was taking extra long. If everybody obeyed the law, 
we would have gotten out there a lot faster. And everybody would have gotten out there a lot faster, honestly. Okay, so... We left our car park area to drive through another car park area to get out because obviously we thought that was a good idea at the time. Uh, but on the way, you hit a roundabout. Now the roundabout is a little awkward because there's a bus route that goes through the roundabout. So, if you can imagine a roundabout, sort of like a, a cross, you know, in terms of uh, roundabouts, it's not one that's like just a sort of T section roundabout. Um, but yeah, it's a full on four, four different entrances and exits roundabouts. Um, one of the straight lines, so like if you're if you're approaching the roundabout, your exit that's immediately in front of you, not to your right or to your left, one of those straight lines uh, was specifically for buses only, because there's a bus route that goes through there. And so I said to the missus, look, can't take that, that's a bus route only. Let's just go straight, we'll loop around the car park, it'll take a little while, but We'll avoid having to shove in if we try and cut in sooner. Um, but we'll loop around the whole car park. And then we'll be on a straight line out so we don't have to let people out or give them way because we're technically... We technically have the right of way. And so my missus was like, that sounds good. I'm on board. Let's do that. So that took a while. And we were wondering why because a lot of other people had this, a similar idea. Um, and yet, for some reason, we were, we were stopped, and at times we were sitting in the car just waiting up to like 10 minutes before anyone would actually move at all. We were like, oh, that's weird. Why is literally no one moving for such a long duration of time? And it was because some of these pricks... I'm not that mad. It's, it's, just, it's just annoying, you know? Uh... Some of these losers that were behind us at the roundabout earlier had just chucked a left and jumped in the bus lane to cut ahead of everyone taking the legal path and trying to squeeze out early. Which of course led to them being sandwiched by buses and being beeped at all the fucking time, but it didn't stop people from doing it. Which is just insane to me. Like, why is it that every other road rule people follow, but the second they see something that says bus lane, they're like, oh, you know what? That one, that one doesn't apply nearly as much as the others do. And then they, they take that as their own personal little taxi path. Hmm. I don't know, man. I don't know, man. A little annoying. Follow the road rules, kids. And adults. Especially adults. Adults can follow the rules. Because I can I can guarantee that if the buses were allowed to have their bus lane all to themselves, and the cars just kept flowing around in that loop like I was expecting them to, every single car, including the ones that took the bus lanes, would have gotten out much, much faster. Guarantee. I also just feel like in general, there needs to be either more parking at that shopping center, or there needs to be more ways to get out of that shopping center than there are to get in. Because at the moment, there's an equal number of entrances and exits. I think there needs to be exit-only paths to get out. Or at least just one main one to get out, and then that would cut down a hell of a lot of the uh, problems because obviously if anyone if anyone's struggling to get out they take the out only path and yeah they might have to go through a bit of traffic to get to it but once they get there it's home sweet home sweet home you're on your way man. all is well you know there we go there's my boy right cool I don't have to do anything anymore so I can just talk um, right I need to wrap gifts would it be weird of me to go and get wrapping paper now? Hmm. Hmm. 
I wonder. If I was watching a YouTuber, and they were doing an Odyssey video, and they got to this point in time, where they were confident that they could just leave the game, and they'd come back to a victory screen, would I be okay with them going and fucking off and grabbing wrapping paper? Probably. Worst case scenario, I'd just skip to see the victory screen and be like, oh hey, it did work. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> I'm gonna go see if I can snag some wrapping paper and some tape, because I've got the scissors. I've got the scissors, I've got knives if I need to. All right, I will be back in a second. Hopefully we win. Boom. Wrapping paper acquired. I've only got like four presents to wrap, I believe. Because two presents uh, have already been given. I know, a little bit early, cheeky. But uh, one of them was a subscription. And so here, here's the deal that me and my sister struck up. My birthday was in September, and her birthday is in December, uh, slightly, slightly uh, before Christmas. It was on the 16th, um, but because my birthday was in September, and I proposed that she got me a subscription to a game that we play together, uh, and then I proposed on top of that, like, hey, our birthdays are three months apart, so. If you get me that for mine, I'll get you that for your birthday now as well. So we both get the three months together right up until December. And so that kind of covers the whole time period between our birthdays. And so we can use that time period to enjoy playing the game together. Right? And so we were just like, fuck yes, that sounds like a good idea. Let's do it. And then when it came closer to Christmas, I was just like, hey, <laughs> for our Christmas gifts for each other, you just want to keep the subscription up again for another three months and just let it roll over and she was just like yep i'm on board and so bam easiest christmas presents for each other ever um and i think my mum's my mum wanted chocolate for christmas and if you know anything about australia during december then you know exactly why it couldn't be wrapped up and put under a tree At least, it couldn't be if, you know, it wasn't wrapped up in a mini fridge that was plugged in and turned on. So, those have just been chilling in the fridge and I've just said, you know what? I don't want it taunting you the whole time. Just eat them whenever you want. So she's already tucking into that chocolate. Which means I just have my dad, my other two sisters, and my missus. Which is... That present, that present, that present, and those presents. Cool. Okay. Sorry. I keep double checking to make sure I've got something for everyone. Because I keep feeling like I've left someone out. But I don't believe I have. Right, what's, what's going on here? Hard standard. Huh. Chill. Very chill. Love that. Quincy, you can go there. And Druid start. I think would be nice. Round 15, don't know what that holds for me, but throwing a shitload of thorns at it sounds like a good call to me. Ooh, gonna lose a couple lives this Christmas. 
God, that sounds fucking horrifying, doesn't it? Jeez, it's like I'm planning to go out and kill people on Christmas Day. So fucked up. Oh, speaking of fucked up, and, uh, and Christmas, there was, uh, the police were at the shopping centre today, lo and behold. Uh, don't know who they were talking to or what they were talking about, but this one guy, I don't even know if he was involved, to be honest. He might not have even been involved or even knew the people that were involved. But um, this one guy just walked past the police officers and was just like, Man, that's so fucked up! And on Christmas! <laughs> oh, it was fucking funny. But at the same time, it seemed like, you know, he was, he was like, a step too close to the line of, like, interfering. And so I'm, I'm glad he ended up, like, backing the fuck off at, at, at some point, but it was just hilarious because he seemed either high or drunk or just really passionate about Christmas. And either way, I'm on board. But, yeah, it was just hilarious to hear this guy being like, Man, and on Christmas? <laughs> it was, uh... Well, let's just say if Christmas was... Oh, actually, it kind of is, isn't it? Isn't there a Christmas island or something? Anyway, what I was going to say was, if Christmas was like a state or a country, he would be incredibly patriotic. And are we good with this? You should be able to take on the leads. Wish we were given wizards. Would have been nice to have a wizard. Um... Anyway, let's get a boat up here, I think. I feel like this map is uh, very good for boats, despite having to remove a section of the map to actually be able to place them. I feel like it's the one map where... Like, admittedly, I haven't tested this, but I feel like every time I remove these and place boats and subs, I have a much higher chance of completing the map without failing, you know, but if I don't remove them and I just go, yeah, whatever, I don't want to spend that 500 bucks, then I've got like a much higher chance to just completely fuck up the map. Again, no tests done to prove that theory, that's just what it feels like. It's intel, good, good, good. Twin guns, hopefully we can get air burst. And then will we be prepared for 40 by then? I don't know. It's gonna be a bit of a gamble. But I do like I don't like to gamble. Not unless it's with fake money or other people's money. That's the smart way to gamble gamble kids. If it's with other pimples money, do it. So long as they don't ask you to pay them back. Whew. Whew. I'm gonna place one of these just to be safe. So I don't know if our Moab popping power is uh, exactly desirable. Now nah, let's go figure infinite. All right, do we have any ways to get lives back? I think we do. Yeah, got the druid. Of course we have ways to get lives back. Fuck him up, Quincy! Thank you. Druid should be able to do the rest. Oh yeah. Jungle's bounty will make cleaning that up next time much easier. Quincy just unlocked triple damage to mild class balloons, so Quincy should also make that a lot easier next time. Which means I don't really... I'm not really too worried about spending 5,290 on an upgrade that mainly targets regular non camouflage balloons. There we go. Let's get more camera detection in here. Why do we have 18 lives all of a sudden? How did we get 18 lives? Is that from you? Do you now do that? Generates one life at the end of each round. Hell yeah! My guy! I forgot they changed that. Sweet! So we will actually get all our lives back even if we don't get Spirit of the Fox. That's nice. That is very nice. Because what, we need another 30 rounds? We got another 30 rounds. Easily got another 30 rounds. Okay, and bang, more money. Let's get triple guns. 
What do I want for 63? Ooh. I don't know. Maybe I'll just place more druids around this guy. See, now the question is, do I go for more money-making druids? So that I can potentially just sell them. Yeah, fuck it, let's do it. Didn't even mean to go for the bottom path, but I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, what I was going to say was, do I go for more money-making druids? To get enough money to, you know, obviously sell them at some point. And, uh, you know, buy my way to victory with Spirit of the Forest. Or do I just go for the bottom path ones to buff the one guy that is making me money? But no, I think this is the better option. When in doubt, make a shitload of money and place a lot of capybaras. As, uh, good old Roger Federer used to say. Good guy, good guy. Anyway. Let's keep it going. me over now is excess camo balloons, of which I will hope that the boat sub and Quincy can deal with accordingly. Otherwise I could camo these guys. I kind of thought I had more room to put a village, honestly, but I guess not. That's fine. We will deal. Honestly, this is... This can be a difficult map. If you're not fully paying attention. If you guys know me, you know that I don't always fully pay attention, especially on... Maps with two different pathways. That's why I find them so difficult. Because I forget to pay attention. Especially if their exits are on, like, opposite sides of the fucking screen. God damn. Hey, paying attention to that. Alright, hopefully these guys have made me enough money. We'll see how we go with the first wave. Just on its own to see if we can just keep this money generation up. Because we will have a lot of brambles. Oh yeah. Brambles absolutely fucking slaughter. That is... Beautiful. So beautiful. Which means we can keep all our money makers. We should probably get this one, actually. I did think he was a little weird not wearing the same headgear as everybody else. But then again, neither is this guy, so... Whatever. But yes, we'll just keep all of our money. Go straight for a Spirit of the Forest, and then once again, we can relax. Spirit of the Forest has got this. Nothing that Spirit of the Forest can't pop. I think that was a correct use of two double two two negatives there. There's nothing that Spirit of the Forest can't pop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It checks out, I think. Obviously it's terrible grammar if you're using it in a uh, in a story. You want your stories to be succinct and concise. Oh god! Camera detection still very lackluster. Won't be for long. We'll get the Spirit of the Forest and then we won't have to worry about camera detection villages or anything like that anyway. I hope. Come on, only 17,000. How hard could it be? How do you guys go about wrapping up awkwardly shaped Christmas gifts? You know? Like, the last time I had to wrap up something that was awkwardly shaped for Christmas, uh, 
was essentially a set of gardening tools. Because it wasn't a set that was pre-made. I purchased multiple different gardening tools and made them into a set. Uh, and my solution to that was very, very dodgy. Um, you see, I'm a big fan of the cereal Wheat Bix. It's an amazing cereal. I'm not sponsored to say this. I would love for them to fucking sponsor me. Hey, Sanitarium, reach out. Not that anybody that works at Sanitarium would be watching this video, I don't think. Um, but you never know. Take, take, take a few risks, take some gambles. Especially when it comes to sponsorships you know you'll never get. Anyway, uh, big fan of Wheat Bix over here. I was indeed a Wheat Bix kid, as the adverts always love to say. Um, but yeah, my solution to uh, bundling up and wrapping these these garden tools, I think it was like a shovel, uh, a sledgehammer, and maybe a spade or like a pitchfork or something. Anyway, my solution to this was obviously no, it was an axe. It was an axe. So very. Very dangerous implements now that I'm thinking about it. Shovel, sledgehammer, and axe. Anyway, um, my, my genius fucking plan, right, was to get four empty wheat fix boxes. Because these, these motherfuckers are, you know, it's not we're, not, we're not talking sledgehammers for children. We're talking proper sledgehammers. Um, and so, in saying that, I took four weed fix boxes, I cut out the top and bottom of two of them, and I think you can kind of see where this is going already. If you can't, allow me to, to, to uh, give you a terrible analogy. Uh, you know the human centipede? Right. You know how obviously people are stitched front end to back end. Imagine if you started a human centipede by obviously stitching two people together. Right, and then instead of one of them being the front or one of them being the back and just continuing in one direction, you, you sort of built around them like a, a Lego brick house where you were just like, all right, you two are in the middle and then you put another person on the, the one on the right and then another person on the one on the left and then they form the middle and now there's four people in the center. Anyway, human centipedes aside, Cut out the middle of two of the wheat fix boxes, sheathed them over all of the gardening tools, so they met up in the middle, sort of, uh, sort of like a little sock, ankle bracelet thing for uh, for these gardening tools. Sticky taped the boxes together, right? So there was one really long wheat fix box now in the middle of these gardening tools. Then, very easily, cut the head off of the other two boxes, leave the bottoms intact, then slide those over the top of the gardening tools and over the bottom of the gardening tools as little end pieces. Sticky tape those to the original pieces, and voila, you now have your gardening tools inside of four wheat fix boxes. And you might think to yourself, why the fuck did you do that? I also wonder that sometimes, but in my mind at the time it was because really long rectangular box easier to wrap than three individual garden tools. Easy. And if you're also wondering, why'd you get them gardening tools? That seems like a really shit Christmas gift. And while you're not wrong, it was because those were the three gardening tools that, uh, well, you see, when I was helping out with gardening, I happened to break three gardening tools. Or, or, or just three tools in general. I guess a sledgehammer's not really for gardening. Or an axe. Oh, I guess an axe kind of is. Anyway. Uh, yeah, so whilst I performed what I like to call gardening, um, my parents would disagree with, with my definition. But uh, yeah. I happened to, to break a sledgehammer, an axe, and a shovel. <laughs> the, uh, the axe, I swung a little too hard. 
and uh, well, to be fair, sledge the axes are meant to be pretty stable. But yeah, the axe I swung a little too hard, and I ended up uh, embedding the head inside of the. Uh, I should have upgraded that. What am I doing? Embedded the head inside of the wood, and oh, when I went to get it out, the head stayed. The the axe handle came with me. So uh, yeah, not ideal. Uh, as for the shovel, digging out roots and uh, big chunks of tree, like tree trunks and shit. So obviously, you know, when uh, going to do that, I dug in, you know, deep into the ground, and then tried to lift it up, and guess what bent? The metal handle. So then, you know, that was also a little bit shit. It's like bending a spoon or a, or a fork that you eat with, you know? You either have to bend it back and hope that it stays okay, and usually if it's lifting up fucking cereal, you know, good chance it'll be fine. But considering this was a big ass gardening tool, and I was somehow bending this fucking hollow pipe that was much thicker than a spoon, uh, yeah, there's kind of not a whole lot of saving that. And then what was the last one? Sledgehammer. Yeah, that was the same situation as the, the axe, really. I just kind of took a big swing and the head of the thing came off. Very unfortunate. Anyway, I break a lot of things when I do work because I take my job very seriously. If I'm not breaking shit while on the job, I am not putting 100% effort into my work. You know how many things I've broken at my current job? None, <laughs> actually, yeah, none. Uh, that tells you something. <laughs> In fact, has there been anything that I've broken at work? I don't think so. Some pallets, maybe, but, you know, they have it coming. They're on their way out anyway. Although I've been told that we're no longer not allowed to allowed to break pallets, which you know, admittedly, there is some sense of inevitability when it comes to that. You can't always predict when you're going to break a pallet, um, so you know, it's going to be a bit of a struggle for me. But um, oh yeah, we need to be making money. I forgot we can't sell can final map yeah. Um, but yes, I've been told at work that if we see a pallet that's mostly broken, or you know, there's there's like nails ripped out of one side, we can't then grab that side, prise it open, rip the nails out the other side, and flatten them down with a hammer for safety. We instead just hammer the nails back into the pallet, even though there's like millions of holes where other companies have clearly tried that shit, and it has not worked. Um, but yeah, we're, we're more on the repairing side rather than broken pallet side, chuck them out. We do have a broken pallet section. Like, obviously it's still needed, because pallets can be broken before we even get our fucking hands on them. But, yep. Supposedly we can't uh, make them safe if we find or deem them broken. Which sucks. Can you fit two boats in one pond here somewhere? Just asking for a friend. So I believe even if I got like pixel perfect, you know, like that's clearly the bottom and that is clearly the side. Let's get a merchant man for money. See if we can fit another one in. Oh, we can! Must be a pretty tight squeeze, but we it does seem doable. Um but Yes, I've been told not to break shit at work a few times now. Hasn't stopped it from happening. I haven't done it in a while, in fact I don't know if I've even broken anything since we've moved to the new location. Pallets don't count. Um, mm. Yeah, no, I don't know if I've broken anything else. 
think we'll set up a, uh, oh god, yeah, I've got to wait for this tree to fucking move. Oh. I remember hating this map because you couldn't put a factory there. Can't fit one in here at all. It sucks. Um. But yes. We will endure. Okay, at the very least. Oh, I can fit four. Fit for oh, I can. That is beautiful. Feel bad for the fifth one who inevitably gets left out here, but overall, I'm sure he won't mind. Anyway, as they say, when in doubt, drew it out. And the merchant men aren't too bad either. A little bit extra at the end of each round. Not too shabby. Alright, there we go. Who's my OG? You're gonna become my spirit. Spirit of the forest. Right. Maybe we just use this guy and the village to buff the rest. You know? Does that get everyone? Ooh, not quite. Damn it. Okay. Oh, we can't sell! Ew! Alright, that's fine. That's fine. We'll just do this. Everybody in range of that. Should be. Um, yeah, go on. I don't think there's a way I can increase this range further, is there? Not without a second village. Maybe there's an upgrade later on that buffs its range more? I mean, I'm pretty sure if I get it to a primary expertise, it gets a um, fucking range buff. <laughs> Screw it. I'm gonna try it. Because that hasn't given it. But the rest of these guys have it. But yeah, the more money we can scam out now, the better. Ooh, we can fit a sub in. That's good. I think we'll go for a middle path, weirdly. I don't often choose middle path for my subs, but considering we're going to 100, I'll make a special uh, allowance. Drop some absolute bombs on this Moab. Or on this bad, rather. Okay, okay, now we're talking. Although, to be fair, I should probably be saving up for my uh, Spirit of the Forest now. Uh, okay, let's do that then. <clears throat> Can't wait. Me and the missus are going out for dinner tonight. Uh, oh yeah, because I'm not working today, I'm actually making this video earlier than I normally would. Because usually, I'd be going to work. And then by the time I finish and get home, it'd be already quite, like... Three-ish, four-ish. Whereas it's only 2.37 now. But uh, then me and the missus would typically go out for dinner. Around like five, six. And then we'd be back by like seven or eight. And then usually I'd uh, take maybe an hour just to sort of settle back in at home, you know. Maybe grab a snack or watch a video or something, get changed. Um, and then I jump onto the Odyssey, but because I'm not working today, look at me go, I'm here now. Get this done and then I'll be going out for dinner. So sadly, you guys don't get to hear about that, but to be fair, I don't think anyone cares. Uh, so that's all well and good. You know what I do wonder about, though? This map versus Encrypted, right? This map came out after Encrypted, I know that much. And yet, there are signs telling you what typing each section is. Instead of, like on Encrypted, they just had the symbols. They didn't have text being like, oh, by the way, this is primary, this is magic, this is military, this is support. No, it was just something you figured out. 
and everybody did. Makes me wonder why they put labels on this one. I don't know. It's very strange. Either way, Spirit of the Forest will once again decimate quite a few of these guys. And then we'll get to go for something I haven't gone for in quite a while. Just because I'm so stubborn about it not hitting that last druid. And uh, we're going to go for primary expertise. Just cause. And then we'll probably surround it with, you know, a crossbow master and a, a attack zone or something like that just to make it worthwhile. But still, I feel like uh, necessary. Why am I able to place there but not further in. That's weird. Oh well, I'll take it. Ooh, all the trees have finally disappeared. And place like a perma spike back here if we really need it. Yeah, I think this will go well. How could this possibly ever go wrong? Okay, only 27,000. That's surprising too, because I consider primary expertise to be a, a pretty strong tower, like somewhat on par with Spirit of the Forest in terms of like damage while it's hitting. I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm drastically wrong, because obviously Spirit of the Forest has advantages of, you know, infinite map range attacks and laying brambles all over the map, you know, so it's constantly attacking with itself as well as with its brambles. Hey, look who's got the buffs! Sorry it took so long, my guy. Um, but yeah, you, I don't know, you just think uh, primary expertise would cost a little more. I guess it's not that great against, like, mobs and stuff. Or, like, uh, ZOMGs. The heavier side of Moabs. But then again, I can't really tell, because I'm suffering against the bias of all the brambles being on the track. Maybe I should do a side-by-side. -side. See which one's better. Anyway. Oh, obviously I can't play that there. But that's fine. When this guy gets to a crossbow master. Range won't really be something he cares about, as you can tell. <laughs> Would have been nice to bring either an alchemist or a, or a wizard along, but I guess those are just too overpowered. Kiwi loves to ban them. Who do we want? I guess if we can afford it, I'll go for a top half. Inferno ring just makes sense. You know, it's not like that attack shoot is in a great position at the moment to do anything else, if I'm honest. Like, that's Probably one of the worst tack shooter spots in the world, at least for this map. But, uh... If it has an entire map range attack that deals a shitload of damage, it doesn't really matter where it goes, does it? Anyway, I think we're pretty set up for this, honestly. There's not much more that I think we need to consider or do. I'm gonna try and go for that Inferno Ring, but if I can't afford it by the end, then I'll just go for the, uh, the old preemptive strike. I feel like that'll work out better. How do we go for DDTs? Okay, okay. They do get a fair distance in, but Crossbow Master shut that shit down nice and early. Love that. Oh yeah, we're going for this Inferno Ring, that's for sure. Plenty of money between then and now. Come on. Oh, 
little bit more. There you go. Oi, foot. And then last but not least, just in case we need it, we most likely won't. Good old punch spike. Actually, yeah, let's let's get a let's get a shot of the action. But hey, we found the presents. I remember. That's what this RC was all about. Finding Christmas presents. Oh yeah, we've 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 won we've won this. I can't tell if my game's glitched out or not, because that red nose on the ZOMGs looks a lot further away from where the actual ZOMG starts. But, I will say this, it looks like it's in the perfect place for my old ZOMG skin, the watermelon. Because I feel like that was a little more stretched out, a little longer. But I don't know, man. Alright, here it is, big boss. Level 20, level 20, Quincy, go! Fuck him up. And boom. That is GG. Oh boy, a beast handler that I didn't pick. Dunno. Alright, presence galore part two completed. I didn't really find a time or a place to put down an NG or a super monkey, but. I don't regret picking them. They were both valuable assets. Could have used them for money early game or damage late game. Anyway, that's been Presence Call Part 2, everybody. Let's uh, see what Insta Monkeys we get. Uh, ooh, I gotta go for the Dart Monkeys. Gotta fill up my Dart Monkey collection. I don't know how much I've completed of it, but I know I'm missing some of the annoying ones in this sort of tier range. So I gotta go for them. See if I get anything new. Probably didn't, but let's have a look anyway. And yes, I don't place my Insta Monkeys down like ever. Uh, I just I just don't really care to use them. I don't I don't like doing it. Doesn't feel like fun if I start off like that, you know? Who am I missing? Who am I missing? Oops, wrong way. I'm missing a 0-3-2. Uh, okay, so I do have all the whites and greens. I'm missing a 0-3-2. That's my favourite early game Dart Monkey. And I'm missing out. Terrible. So I need a 0-3-2, and then it's just purples, and of course, the fifth tiers. Cool, cool. Alright, I'll build up to it. Anyway, like I said, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. That's been Presence Galore part two completed. I will see you guys after Christmas, so enjoy your holidays, enjoy some time off with your friends and family, and enjoy opening presents if that's your thing. Anyway, take care of yourselves. Happy holidays, everybody.